Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. Shalom, shalom. We're back on another video. This one's going to be about seven signs. How to know you have the Holy Spirit. Many people have been asking me to make this throughout the month. So this is a well-needed video for the body of Christ. Let's go. Let's go. Number one is you have a desire to lead people to Christ and God. Okay. Um, never underestimate the power of a seed. One thing about when you have the Holy Spirit is like a burning desire to help people. Um, whether it's through giving. You know, you have the spirit of love. You have the spirit what Christ had, which is called the spirit of Christ, according to the Bible. Okay, you just have a desire to help people, to love people, and to lead people to salvation through Jesus Christ. That is the one way to know you have the Holy Spirit. Okay, number two is you're willing to suffer in the flesh, and which leads to being obedient. Okay, which means you're willing to walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Okay, so you are willing to suffer in the flesh to be obedient, okay, which all stems down to being obedient. The Bible says this in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. I leave a verse right here. It says that he who has suffered in the flesh has keys from sin, so he will no longer live in his life to the lust of man, but to the will of God. Okay, so this is a clear sign you have the Holy Spirit when you're no longer feeding your flesh willingly. You choose to be obedient. You choose to do what God wants you to do in your life. And yes, you're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be without sin, but you're choosing obedient. Okay, you're winning more of these battles, these temptations that are creeping up by the devil. You're winning more of those battles. You're resisting the temptations. You're resisting the devil. And eventually, you know, through the word of God saying that resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you're continuously resisting the devil and you're submitted to God. Okay, that's how you know you have the Holy Spirit. Number three is, ooh, this is good. This is a good one, guys. You are led by the whole, you're led by the spirit of truth, okay? Not by your emotions, not by your feelings, and not by your carnal desires. So let me repeat this. You're led by the spirit of truth, not by your emotions, not by your feelings, or carnal desires, okay? A lot of people, guys, they have a religious spirit. And when you have a religious spirit, you don't have the spirit of truth, okay? The spirit of truth leads to all truth, even though. It goes against your programming. It goes against your desires, which you think is right, which you think your what's your emotions and your feelings. No, the spirit of truth overpowers and overtakes your carnal desires, your feelings, your emotions, what you feel is right. And a lot of a lot of the times, guys, when we first pick up our cross, when we first learn about the Bible and learn about the truth, sometimes, guys, even me in the beginning, the feelings, the emotions, okay, the especially that for me was a carnal desires. Okay. If it goes against the word of God. It goes against the word of God. And this is the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth will let you know what's allowed and what's not allowed. Okay, you're no longer led by your feel your feelings. You're no longer led by your emotions. You're no longer led by your carnal desires. Or you're no longer led by, you know, uh people. If they, if these people aren't guys, do not take advice from someone who's not obeying God. Only take advice from someone, only be learning, especially when it comes to spirituality. Only be learning from someone, guys, who's obeying God, who's obedient. You don't want to be, uh, you know, taking advice from someone who's on the wrong path, who's on that broad, wide gate, which leads to destruction. Because the Bible says, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. So if you're following someone who's blind, someone who does not have the Holy Spirit, someone who's not obeying God, you're going to go down the path where they're going. So it's important for you to do your own discernment, to ask God for wisdom, to ask God for the Holy Spirit if you haven't received it yet. Many people ask me this all the time. You know, Mark, how do I receive the Holy Spirit? The Bible says, if you ask, it will shall be given unto you. Okay, I'll leave a verse right here. Okay, if, if a parent gives to his children, what makes you think that God won't give to you? If you being evil, I'll leave a verse right here. I don't know the whole verse by heart. But yes, guys, ask God for the Holy Spirit. And understand this too, guys. When you get the Holy Spirit, your life is going to ch change. You got to prepare for that. You got to prepare for the things that you're doing. Uh, let's say, let's say if you had like a, an addiction, porn addiction, masturbation addiction, drug addiction, right? Whenever addictions you had, let's say if you fall short and do that again, it's not going to be the same. You're not going to be able to enjoy it once you wasn't did. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It brings conviction. It brings change. Okay. That's why a lot of people don't receive the Holy Spirit because they're, they're not trying to change. They're not trying to repent. And because they're not trying to do that, then the Holy Spirit can't dwell within an unclean temple. So it vanishes away. It only could dwell with someone who's obedient. Once you, you know, committing willful sin, uh, even though there's a chapter in the Bible where it talks about Saul and um, Saul was being disobedient. You know, Saul was anointed and God took away the Holy Spirit from him and he brought in demons to torment him. OK, and see, that's what happens when you're not being obedient. And see, God had grace for him because Saul was being disobedient for you know a long period of time. It wasn't just one mistake. But once you continue being disobedient, you continue just, you know, for months on and out and God's warning you, God's speaking to you, you just reject it. God will torment you with demonic spirits. OK, so always understand that. 
You must be obedient, man. Obedient, that's the key. That should be the number one thing you should strive for on this walk, guys. Obedience. Okay, number four. And how do you be obedient, guys? To obey the teachings of Jesus Christ. That's how you be obedient. To obey the word, the word of God. Number four is a complete transformation and a re renewal of your mind and spirit. Okay. The Bible talks about this in Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 2, the renewal of your mind. Okay. And this is what the Holy Spirit does. It changes your how you talk, the way you dress, the people you surround yourself with, the, the things that you're doing. It's a complete change. Okay, your whole mind is being renewed. Your spirit is being renewed. Okay, it's a complete transformation. That is what happens when you receive the Holy Spirit, especially in the beginning, because in the beginning stages, you have a lot of changes to make. Not to say that you won't have changes to make five years later, 10 years later. For me, it's been about almost four years since I've been in the truth, and I'm still changing. There's still a lot of things that I'm changing. So no one's perfect. We're still trying to be perfection. We're still trying to stay on this path, and you know, whatever God wants us to change will change. Okay, so always understand that. And all comes down, guys, like I said, to being obedient. Okay, so that is what the Holy Spirit does. It, it changes you. You can't do what you're doing before. Guys, if you say you're in the truth, right? If you say you're on the narrow path, but you're still doing the things that you did when you were in the world, don't deceive yourself. And this is why it's important, guys, to have the spirit of truth in you. Okay, the spirit of truth, like I said, brings conviction. It lets you know what to do. Okay, it lets you know your error. Okay, the Bible even says the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay, that's the 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 to 6. I'll leave a verse right here. Okay, and uh, a lot of people, guys, that have the spirit, unfortunately, they have the spirit of error in them and they get mad when the truth is presented because that spirit overtakes them. The spirit of error overtakes them. All right. Number five is you have become set apart. This is all about being, when you have the Holy Spirit, guys, there is no, no way you could live your life like you did in the past. Okay. You just can't. When you become set apart, which the Bible says, even the Bible says that to be holy for I am holy. What does holiness mean? What does to be holy means? It, it's, it means to be separate, okay? To not keep company with the ungodly, okay? To change your to change your manners, your morals, okay? To not do the things of this world, okay? The Bible even says that whoever loves the world, the love of God does not dwell in him, okay? So it's very crucial. This could have been number one, to be set apart, guys. It's very crucial, okay? The Bible doesn't say be religious for I am religious. No, it says be holy, be set apart for I am holy, okay? That's what it's all about. So that's how you receive the Holy Spirit, guys, being set apart. A complete, which also comes with, you know, when you become set apart, that's when that transformation comes, you know, comes in hand. You can't get to the next level in your life, guys, if you're still surrounding yourself with devils. People who are just keeping you down. And that's where people deceive themselves. Okay. Let me repeat this, guys. You cannot get to the next level in your life. You cannot receive the Holy Spirit if you're still keeping company with devils. You're, you're not being obedient. Okay. Like I said, the Holy Spirit can't dwell within an unclean temple. An unclean temple, guys, has unclean spirits, has demons. Okay, that's why I said in the beginning stages, guys, it's a complete transformation because now you're getting set free from those demons. You're getting set free from any uh, demonic spirits, okay? The renewal of your mind, you're getting free from demonic strongholds. It's a change, and this is a process. And as many people are going through that process, a lot of people, they fall back because they see that when you're getting changed, when you're being renewed, you're going to lose people who are broken. You're going to lose people who are damaged. You're going to lose people who are not trying to change, who are not willing to be set apart. And it's going to be a lonely road. That's why the Bible says only few people find the narrow path. Okay, Only few only few people are going to be willing to go through, to suffer in the flesh, to be obedient. Only few people are going to be willing to desire to lead people to Christ and God. Only few people, guys, are going to be led by the spirit of the truth, not led by the spirit of the world, not led by their emotions, their feelings, their carnal desires. Okay, only few people are going to be willing to have that complete transformation. Okay, like I said, guys, people who are broken, they don't like the people who are healed. And when you have Christ in you, when you have the Holy Spirit, you're healed. And the people who are broken, which is most people of this world, that's why they need Jesus. That's why they need him in their life. But a lot of people reject him because, like I said, it comes with change. and not trying to change. But these people, guys, are not going to want to be friends with you no more. You're going to bother those demons in them. Your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is going to bother their, their demons. That's exactly what's going to happen. And if you guys, if you made it this far, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and smash the like button. Number six is you possess the traits of a godly man and woman. Okay. What are, what are, the, what are the traits of a godly man and a godly woman? Okay. It talks about this in Galatians chapter five, verse 22 to 23. It is the fruits of the spirit. Okay. I don't know the whole thing by heart. I'll leave a verse right here, but it pretty much means peace, love, uh, gentleness, kindness, patience, long suffering, faith. Um, temperate, self-control. I'll leave a verse right here. And these are the things we should all be striving for, okay, right here. We should all be striving to have self-control. We should all be striving to have love, love for your brother, love for your sister, love for your neighbor.
Okay, because love overpowers, a mo uh, sorry, love conquers a multitude of sins. Okay, so always having love in you, and that's important. You don't want to be having hate for your brother, uh, jealousy and envy. Those are the those are the flesh. You know, that's the, the Bible. People says the Bible says that uh, those those people who envy and stuff like that, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. So we should be striving, guys, to have the fruits of the spirit. Number seven is you have a thirst for righteousness. Okay, I, I put you have a thirst for righteousness. The Bible says that those who thirst for righteousness will be filled. But the reason why I put that number seven is because a lot of people might watch this video and they might think that, oh, dang, I can't live my life without sin. I, I can't be perfect. I, you know, I've struggled. And best believe it, guys, just because you have the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that you're not going to fall short. doesn't mean that you're going to be without sin or sinless. Absolutely not. But when you do sin, when you do fall short, when you do make your mistakes, you have a thirst for righteousness, so you don't need someone to tell you to change. You have a desire in you to change because you love God. You truly love God. You truly love. And this is all about what having a thirst for righteousness is. When you love God, guys, you are going to have a thirst for righteousness. Facts. When you love Jesus, you're going to have a thirst for righteousness. So best believe if you have a thirst for righteousness, you will be filled according to the Bible. So let's get it. Let's go. These are the seven signs. How to know you have the Holy Spirit. These are, these are um, what the heck? These are seven signs. Yeah. How to know you have the Holy Spirit. Right. Number one is you desire to lead people to God in Christ. Okay, number two is willing to suffer in the flesh to be obedient. Number three is you are led by the spirit of truth, not in emotions, not feelings, not carnal desires. Okay, number four is a complete transformation, renewed mind and spirit. Number five is you have become set apart. Number six is you possess traits of a godly man and a godly woman. Number seven is you have a thirst for righteousness. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you guys haven't already, make sure you guys smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. And if you guys wish to support me, my links are down below in the description. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.